I'm Tyler Young, and for the last two and a half years, I have been working on a brand new user interface for X-Plane 11, and today I get to show it off. I'm going to start by talking about what it's like to set up a flight in X-Plane 11. We got a lot of feedback in X-Plane 10 that people liked the quick flight screen, where you set up your aircraft and your location and your weather and so on, all from one screen. And we've gotten a lot of requests to make that quick flight screen more powerful. People want to change their livery or choose a ramp start or have more control over the weather and so on. And we took those requests to heart. So the X-Plane 11 flight configuration screen is really a successor to the quick flight screen. The goal here was to make the most important details about your flight available at a glance in one place with the ability to drill down and see the details in each of those sections. So we wanted this to be the way that you edit a flight. No more having to go through the aircraft screen to pick an aircraft or go to the location screen to pick a ramp start and so on. Every aspect of your flight is configurable from this one place. So let's start by looking at the aircraft. You can see we have this grid view where you can scroll visually through all of your aircraft. The old folder hierarchy is gone and instead we have these filters up top that are so much more powerful. So I can, for instance, filter by the aircraft's classification. Let's pick an airliner. Or by the number of engines, we can pick two. Manufacturer, let's pick McDonnell Douglas. And you see we've narrowed down our potentially huge aircraft collection down to just what we were looking for. And these filters scale to thousands of aircraft. As many as you could realistically install, it'll be easy to find exactly the one you're looking for. And you just can't say that for a folder hierarchy. If we click Customize here, you can see that we can set the details of the aircraft. We've got the livery up here. You can either choose from the drop-down or just scroll through the list, and you can see exactly what that livery is going to look like on your plane. If we open the weight and balance screen, you see we've got this nice graph on the right that animates as you change your fuel weight and your load. We've got the ability to swap between metric and imperial units. I'm sure nobody in England here is excited about that. If we go back and look at the failure screen, I think this is more or less what you expect. You've got lots of different failures in lots of different categories. But if you look up at the top, you've got a search box. And like all of the tables throughout the X-Plane 11 user interface, you can search this. The fact is that no matter how well we as developers organize the failures, it's just never going to be as easy as searching because there are just so many options. So now you open the failures, you type a search like fuel, and you see all of your fuel-related failures all in one place. Now if we move on to setting the location, you can see this is very similar to the existing Quick Flight screen. We type in some text, maybe Atlanta, but when you click Customize, you get this visual location picker. This is an overview of the airport with all of the ramp starts, all the runway starts, all annotated um, on a map. So we can just zoom in on these ramp starts here and select exactly the place we'd like to start. This one's C-22. Or maybe we just know that we want to go to the south of the airport so we can drag over there and, and pick something there. Now with our location chosen, let's go back to the main screen and take a look at the weather. Here we can drag the slider to go through the different presets or like location and aircraft. If we click customize, we get all the details. Here in the center pane, we have the visual weather editor, so we can click on a cloud layer and drag it around. We can raise its top or change its base. And up at the top here, we can click add cloud layer and we can drag that one around. And then the wind works the same way. You click add wind layer and you can drag the wind layer around. In the properties pane on the left, you can change its speed or its turbulence and so on. And finally, if you're using real weather, you get a preview that looks much the same. You can click on individual layers to get details about them and so on. So that's setting up the flight. Now once we start the flight, we can come back to this screen and edit the flight from the same interface. I'm going to skip ahead here so you don't have to watch X-Plane load. But you can see that as we change the weather and the time, you get the option to either apply your changes or discard them. If we click apply, you'll see that those changes take effect. Now, similar to the flight setup, the settings are now all housed in one window. No more going to 10 different windows to configure the sim initially. You just go through the different tabs in the settings. There are a few areas of this I want to highlight, and the first is the joystick. Like the rest of the UI, we've tried to make this very visual. You click on the button you want to assign to, and you choose its function. If we click edit here for this button, you can see we can search through all of the available commands. We type flaps, and there we've got flaps up set for this button. This makes it so much easier to see on the whole what's assigned to which buttons on your joystick. Now this visual assignment won't be available for all flight controls. We can't get pictures of every piece of hardware ever made, but we are planning to be able to ship with more than about 70% of users getting this nice visual experience and we'll add more later. The other area of the settings I want to highlight is the networking. Who has not been annoyed trying to figure out IP addresses when you're trying to network the sim? This is just a perpetual pain for anyone using a networked flight sim. And so in X-Plane 11, we perform as much of that configuration as we can automatically. 
So if I'm running X-Plane on this computer and I turn on another machine that's configured as an external visual, you'll see it's going to appear in the right side there. Boom. That machine is connected to mine now and my machine starts sending it data all without me touching a thing. The same goes for turning on an instructor operator station. If I watch the right here, that iOS is now connected to this machine. This works for iPhone and iPad apps as well. On the whole, networking configuration is getting a lot more hands-off in X-Plane 11. So that's all I have time for. I think you're going to find the X-Plane 11 user interface to be easy to learn and as you get comfortable with it, much, much faster to configure the sim just the way you want. And that was the goal, to have a user interface that just gets out of the way and lets you fly the way you want to. I can't wait to get this in your hands in November and I can't wait to hear your feedback. Thanks very much.